A Essendon clash this afternoon took the back seat to the clashes during the week between the VFL and the West Australian Football League over player permits. After league threats and appearances in the Supreme Court, Phil Narkel and Phil Cronin made their debuts with the Saints, while the Bombers' one newcomer was Leon Baker from Swan Districts. Essendon have won their last six matches against the Saints, and indeed some of their clashes have proved to be rather fiery. Today at Moorabbin, our commentators were Jack Edwards and Peter McKenna, and our replay begins at the five-minute mark of the third quarter. Has only kicked three goals and kicked those in the first term. Now out they go again from the half-back position. Back kicks in. This time the target is Burns. We've seen some good marks here today. That was a gripper. Burns shoots it further upfield. It's been taken here by Cronin. Cronin looking upfield now, looking for a tall man in Cowie, I would believe. Cowie sets himself. Madden comes in, can't take the mark. Now it comes back now. It cross drives goal with Lockett's the target. Big strong Lockett can't take it. Not backed up by Rovers once again. It's Lockett going can't pick it up yet. He's still in there. Gets it out to Muir, but threw it, I thought. The they umpire all calls play on. They all stopped waiting for the free kick, which did not eventuate. Frank Donnell gets it down towards half forward. Oh, good play there, and that's a mark. Good play there by Jeff Cunningham as he found Paul Moyd about 45 metres out from goal directly in front, kicking into a slight breeze. Essendon lead by five points. The time clock, five and minutes and 20 seconds into the third turn. Well, young Salmon had difficulty uh, making the distance from where he is. There's another injury to St Kilda. Looks like Robbie Muir this time. Behind Paul Moore, though, is normally a very long kick of a football. He aims at the goals, kicks across the face of goal, and the ball is forced through for one behind. So the Saints move on to 9-8, Essendon 9-12, and there's Robbie Muir. And it looks good, it could be his wrist or shoulder. I'm not too sure the way the trainers are holding that arm. So Muir coming off the ground to the applause of the St Kilda fans and Essendon going into attack through Vanderhaar. To Folds goes now. Up towards Salmon again. Salmon takes another mark. Good lead out in front of Crow. And Salmon now. Well, let's hope his luck does change because he's, as I said, kicked three in the first quarter and has missed about five since then, yeah, I would great think. Great pass there by Gary Foles there, streaming down the ground and instead of blazing away at the goals, he saw the lead and a beautiful low foot pass at him right on the chest. Well, seven. 25 metres out from goal. Essendon leading by four points. He's kicked it. Essendon lead by ten points over St Kilda. Yes, and uh, although St Kilda are stuck with Essendon, uh, you always get that feeling about Essendon that they could run away at any moment. And uh, St Kilda are giving away a tremendous amount of height all over the ground to the Bombers and sometimes getting towards the end of a game. Admittedly, it's only in the third quarter. The Saints will have to answer that one quickly, I would think, Jack, and not let Essendon get a run on. Yes, well, they're, they're playing well enough. Now at the bounce. Big open territory down there on St Kilda's forward line, but Madden winning in the ruck again. The ball tapped down, coming through. His key. Oh, oh boy! I don't think he hit him. I think I'll he missed what, it. The elbow was about three feet in the air, though, Jack. Yeah, he didn't hit him with it though. He ducked under it. But back to the football. Down we go, and it could be a mark to the man in front. The umpire says not. It's been forced out there by Morwood, and the mark taken in defence uh, by the Doug by Cox, Cox getting the booze there because yes. he's an ex St Kilda player, of course. Jeff Cunningham. He's playing well. Looking in there for short, Burns is the target. A penalty would have to be applied, I would think. I don't think it is. Oh well. I thought it should have been. Now, can he make the distance for about 50 metres out? They're Take a good kick. They're finding it very difficult from there. There's just a slight breeze. But Once it's again, a... Peter, there are no rovers down yeah. in that goal square for when Rocket contests the mark, if the ball does drop short, there's, I speak. There's the kick from Burns. It won't make the distance. Up they go. The ball was tried to force through by the Essendon defenders. In they go. Here's a chance for Cowie. Lock it. He's kicked it. That's his fourth. Tony Luff should have kicked, in my opinion, at least seven. I agree, Jack. He's played a tremendous game at football. That was very, very good play as he grabbed it. And good play by Daryl Cowie, who battled that ball to the ground. The scoreboard showing Essendon 10-12, St Kilda 10-8, and that's exactly what they needed. Right, let's see what happens now. Side bottom being beaten by Matt. Got the tap that time, but they didn't get to a teammate. Picked up by side bottom, off the side of the boot, lock it there! Oh, I tell you what, this kid's not bad, 15 metres. He 
He's a good player, this oh, player. Oh, he's a good player. I'll tell you his stats at the moment. This kid, I said, should have kicked seven goals. I say kid because he's eight, 18 years of age. He's only played 12. This might be his 13th league game now. He's 6 foot 3 and 14 9. And he's going for his fifth goal. Will he get it? Point blank range. Dead in front. It's through. Well, Tony Rockets kick five. And the scoreboard showing 74 to 72. And bottom. Up high, taps it down, comes to Fashini. Left foot's up to Ward, Cowie punched away on that occasion by Weston. Warwood's there, can't take it. It comes through to Donnell, he got one in the back, taken by Cunningham. Out to Narkle, Narkle goes to, oh yes, and found it! He's got luck in the game. He's got luck the game. My word. Great play, Narkle. Tremendous football, Jeff Cunningham, initially to get that ball out as he got it over the top there to Narkel. Narkel once again didn't blaze away. Lockett going for goal number six. Let's see what the young full forward can do. And this will lift the stands here at St Kilda if he can kick it. He stabs at it. It's swinging back. It's a goal. Six goals to Tony Lockett. And the Saints come from everywhere. Well, would you believe that Essendon played in the grand final of last season against Hall Ford? and killed it with a no-hopers, if I could use that word. Uh, fourth opponent going under Tony Lockett. Now Carey's going to fall back, and he'll be far too small, I would think, uh, for Lockett. Lockett, six foot three, Carey about five foot eleven. And the Saints, I said, weren't, very, weren't a very good side last year, but my word, they're giving us a shake this afternoon. St Kilda lead by eight points. Side bottom, just got the tap, doesn't go far. Comes to turf. Can St Kilda go back into attack? They're about to do so. It's been driven off the boot of Tomei, down to the half forward line. Mark taken by Weston. Weston of Essendon turns the tie. Paul Weston as well, was one of Lockett's opponents, or his first opponent, actually. There's a captain's mark. Beautiful mark, uh, but it's kick. a free kick in the meantime to Cunningham. Jeff Cunningham has been outstanding player today with his tackling and his determination. Don't hand pass there. Kick it as long as you can. He's gone the short one, and that's a very ordinary kick and poor play by Jeff Cunningham. The ball back to the centre. There he is again, though, Cunningham. Over to Tomei. Tomei has the ball. Great play by Hurd. Shane Hurd streaks across the half-back line and kicks it out wide. He's got a loose man there in Terry Danaher. The Bomber's in trouble. Oh, well done. Oh, beautiful smother by the Saints. Oh, Morwood's copped it in the back, and that's a free kick, and that's poor play by Essendon. Well, Morwood on the wing position out of side will be looking into the half forward zone, I would think, up toward Cowie. That's Is he placed kick. it? Yes, and Cowie coming in from the back, can't take the mark. It's on the turf, side bottom hand pass comes out, and the Essendon defence stands firm. Out of trouble, little Fashini up high, tap down now toward Tomei. Tomei gets it into Morwood. Morwood can't pick up cleanly, hooks it underneath, a chance for Keel. Keel's left foot kick comes out up to the half forward zone. Could have been a free kick. It's given to Cowie, over towards side bottom. Side bottom goes in with Madden in pursuit. It's side bottom and Madden. Madden wins out. Side bottom got the fumbles. A hand pass comes back to Carey. Carey's left foot kick takes them out of trouble. And a mark taken up there by no Bradbury. Well, the there was no mark, Jack. But he called it a mark. But I thought it was too. The umpire may have played in <laughs> anticipation. Yes, I don't think he could see. But still there's Shane Hurd coming away with the ball. The Bombers there desperate now because they realise they're in trouble. Weston kicks it long. Burns is there. A courageous mark. That's guts. A real gutsy mark by Greg Burns. He could have popped the grandstand there. Oh, Markle gets bundled out of the way to free kick the Phil Markle against Tim Watson. And the Saints supporters have gone mad. Here's the short pass. Here's the other West Australian recruit there. And this is Cronin. Cronin with a hand. Play by Alphonston. He kicks long. He's looking for Lockett. Lockett and Carey. Oh, no, no mark. Play on the call. In they come again. Moore would come in. Got by. Got caught. Up by. Said holding the ball. No, Tony Lockett didn't oh. hold that mark. Sheer was a great effort, though, but you can see the height there. Jack's going to be a problem for Carey. And strength, too. Western hand passes out of trouble, or nearly into trouble. He gave it to Duckworth. He, from half-back, goes up. Another injury at the Pierce's side, side bottom. bottom. again. And uh, it's a chance now for Essendon to score. He does so, and a great mark and play on Danaher. Danaher swings round in trouble. Van der Haas caught, and it should have been a penalty, but play on was the call. The umpire, oh, the boy, Terry Danaher. 
thought it should have been a free kick against Vanderhaar. Well, he should have either kicked the goal on his left foot or gone back and had his kick and he turned straight into trouble. St so. Kilda eight points in front. It's Essendon in attack, only 30 metres out from goal. Can St Kilda take it out? Keel's free kick. Tackle too high. Decent Kilda fan. 15 metre penalty against Essendon for kicking the ball yeah. out. Tony Bahaja deliberately kicked it down into the fence and oh boy they've got their confidence up Jack. Yes, Peter Keel now, what's he going to do? Is he going around the flank? That he's doing. Narkel's in there with Cunningham, they all fly, they're all getting too ambitious now. No teamwork in there. Could have been a free kick to the Essendon Cesar, but the umpire said no. We've been playing nearly 15 minutes into the third term. It's in Kilda, 12-8-80. Essendon, 10, 12, 72. Oh. And a charge for Essendon through. He looks for fouls. The hand pass is poor. And it's out of bounds. And St Kilda are doing this at the moment. Cowie is uh, manfully taken on all the big man work. Side bottom's gone off the ground. The only really two tall players they have at the moment are Crow and, of course, Cowie, who, in my opinion, has been a tremendous team player all day. There's the ball thrown out. It's grabbed by Cunningham, who's been great all day. The ball up towards the centre wing. In they go after it. It's grabbed by Hurd. Shane Hurd onto the left foot, hooks it back towards half forward. Up they go. Cowie couldn't take it back. Great play, Peter Keel. Taken away, though, by the West Australian recruit there in Leon Baker. He gets it down towards set half forward. It's a free kick down the field against Robert Mace. And this could mean a goal coming up to the Bombers because Paul Vanderhaar will be taking the kick from 35 metres out, or is it Frank Denell? Well, they raffled that one, and Denell is elected to take the kick from 35 metres out directly in front. And you cannot afford free kicks down the field, Jack. No, and this, uh, this fellow either, he kicks the ball a mile. Frank Denell, normally a good kick. Essendon trailing by eight points before the kick. Donnell puts it up high, the umpire right underneath it, Essendon get a goal through Donnell and it's only two points of difference. Yes, and uh, well, Robert Mason won't be too happy with that. He's a desperate player and trying very, very hard for his side, but uh, you can't afford late tackles, especially when a place kicking it down towards the forward line and that was an easy goal to Essendon. At the moment, 12-8 Kilda. Essendon 11-12, two points of difference, the Saints in front, we're seeing a tremendous game here at Moorabbin. St Kilda lead by two points, the time clock approaching 17 minutes, the third term on 7th Street League. Up it goes and down it comes, kicked by Cunningham, but nobody home for St Kilda. No one home at all at the half That's happened position. three or four times, Jack. They must be all kick chasing. Battle on now. Oh, could have been a free kick there, St Kilda's way. The umpire said no. Cowie pops it back overhead. The Pierce and Kilda's is getting a bit rattled. Neagle wins out with a bit of pace there. He'll swing back toward the middle. He's gone in there. Morwood over the back. Into the back of the opponent. And the umpire's paid the mark. Gee, it could have been a free kick. Morwood. For the kick out. Morwood kicks up high. No mark. Play on to game. Duckworth gets it out to watch it. He can't make contact. It's on the turf. Just foot football being played by Cross. And Ooh. the umpire said a, a bounce would be Ooh, a bit He's a little goer, Andrew Kilda. Cross. Look at that. He's in, into the packs every time. And uh, strong little black. And he could be a very promising player this year as a rover for the Saints. There's the ruck work again. Watson gets it on the left foot. It's all the Saints. So his machine, he's got it. He ducks away. Goes for the long kick up towards Lockett. Out he comes, too late though this time, and take an easy mark. One of Essendon's better players today in Peter Bradbury. Gets it across the base of goal towards Carey. Carey has a bounce, lock it in hot pursuit. Carey kicks it right out wide. He's looking there for Donnell. Donnell against Cunningham. The ball bounces back. There's a bit of pace being shown there by Doug Jackson. No wonder as he's a, a stall gift runner almost. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if he was running next at the Easter Carnival. Jack, he's that quick. Well, the boundary throw-in taking place on the outer side wing. Essendon trailing St Kilda by two points. Cowie doing a great job, as Peter McKenna told you. Bahaja picks up for Essendon, looking for somewhere to go. He straightens up, drives towards Van der Haar. No oh, free kick to Van der Haar. The umpire said he was being held, so a free kick will be taken by Paul Van der Haar. Well, within scoring range, that would be about 45 metres out, and Van der Haar has one goal to his credit at this stage. Yeah, well, Paul Tomei uh, 
grabbed him by the shorts there as that ball came down. That extra height there put Tomei under a lot of pressure as that quick kick came down. Vandahar is a long kick of the football. Let's see what he does with this one. It's a drop punt. The goal up by moves across and he says that's a goal for Vandahar and that is his second of the match. Well, St Kilda haven't given a fight, of course. Essendon have just got to the front, 84 playing 80. It's Essendon leading by four points at this stage of the match, which is 19 and a half minutes into the third term. We've, Peter and I have seen a very interesting game of football today. A lot of people thought it was going to be a one-sided affair, but believe you me, it has not been that way. The Bombers, four points in front. Cowie in the ruck, beaten by Madden, comes to Foles, he'll drive long, and does he ever? Down to the forward line, here comes Crow, picks it up, oh, beautiful pick up by Max Crow, playing against his old club, a long kick, there's Burns again into the back of the pack, grabbed by Foles, who was a very long kick, up towards the forward line, but a nice mark ducking back there, and that is Silvio Faschini. Gone to Alfredstone on the half-back line, Calling for the ball as Morwood out, out the back of Donnell. Well placed kick too, but uh, Morwood didn't quite hold it cleanly. But he got a hand pass out. The umpire said holding the ball. Tough. Oh, he should have taken the mark, really, but uh, that he didn't do. So uh, Essendon will come into attack now through the boot of Donnell. Normally a good kick. No exception. Drives long towards Salmon. And Salmon takes oh, the mark. Boy. Isn't it great when they've got someone to kick at? I think it was a bad play by Max Crow. Great mark by Salmon, but bad play by Max Crow. He, did, he attempted to mark that with him uh, and caught behind. He should have tried to punch, and he is a great punch of a football. Well, Max, Max Crow should try and get the front berth and make it harder for Salmon to mark over the top. Well, now, outstanding forward displays, Jack, by Lockett and uh, young Paul Salmon. Two 18-year-olds, yes. I would yes, think. Yes, they've done very well indeed. Salmon going for goal number five. Lent back on the kick, but it's another goal. Essendon go to 10 points in front. Well, Essendon came away in the finish. The Bombers led by nine points at quarter time, only three at half time, 16 at three quarter time, and went on to win the game by 37 points.